Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And uh, the image I have on the screen is just one of many depictions of what they call the fallen angels. And I always find it fascinating because they always, they kind of show them as if they have wings. Now, I don't know if there's really any indication whether or not the fallen angels had wings. Uh, we know the seraphim, they do have wings. They have wings, they fly, etc. Um, boy, I tell you what, one day maybe I should do a video about that. That one might just blow you away. Uh, anyway, nonetheless, uh, this morning I got, well, I don't say I got the text this morning, but uh, Cindy, uh, a sister that listens to our broadcast, she, she definitely was up this morning because when I answered her back, uh, she is asking me about doing a teaching on Genesis chapter 6. And I kind of understood what she was referring to because this is something that some scholars look at when we look at Genesis 6 as being, um, in other words, it seems to imply that the giants were there in our day, but it doesn't seem to indicate that they really are the ones that caused uh, the children to come into play. So we're going to look at that, and I think maybe what I should do is actually first go to the King James version of this, just for the sake of uh, what most people actually get to see on this, and uh, not the Hebrew, but we're going to go to the Hebrew as well. It's very important to go to the Hebrew. Verse 4 is what we're looking at here. Um, the, there were giants on the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came un, in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And this is really where the issue comes up, because... Uh, and I'm going to show that to you and just say it. There were giants in the earth in those days. And it literally is almost worded that way. Uh, but it's not quite. Uh, I'm going to go in there and I'll show you exactly what that is. But in those days, for example, uh, is there. And But then we have, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, in which they bear children to them. Okay, so that's where the confusion comes. In other words, it just seems to appear that it's implying there are giants in the earth in those days, uh, and that later on we have this other encounter. And some people actually refer to the sons of God. They believe that that's actually a reference to um, the sons of Adam, but it's not. It's not, although there are later passages that's, that imply that uh, about the sons of God being this, like the children of Adam. It's not actually referring to that in this case here. Let's go to the Hebrew, though, of this, and let's take a serious look at this. Uh, now, the Hebrew translates it uh, Nephilim, which is incorrect as well. Okay, I'm going to go to that in just a minute. Why? Now, it is, we do have what appears to be Nephilim here. And if you look at the vowel points that they put in, uh, oh, about 10,000 years after, uh, or even later than that, I guess, uh, after the uh, publication, you know, the vowel points were never there in the original Hebrew. In fact, i kind of give you an idea. Let's just... So we kind of we, we want to establish these things to you really kind of get so you know this right. Uh, this is the Dead Sea Scrolls right here. Now of course it's not looking at the original, but uh, we just want to look at some of the text. Okay, here you go. This is what Hebrew looks like in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and of course they've you know transcribed it into modern print so it's easier to see but if you look at the original scrolls like if we were to look at the Isaiah scroll it'll be like this there are no dots and dashes around anything it's just simple the letters know what they call vowel points the 
and, you know, and I appreciate the fact these rabbis added vowel points because these little dots and dashes, their purpose was to try to help maintain the pronunciation of the words. But here's where the problem comes in. Just in this case here, you know, it looks like Hanephilim or the Nephilim, but it's not. It's missing the Yod. Now, how do we know it's missing? Because in Numbers 13, when Moses wrote it over here about Enoch, uh, not Enoch, by the way, Enoch, which is, um, he was a son of a fallen angel. Here, Moses distinguishes with a Yod right here that the sons of Enoch are Nephilim. Now, with the yod there, we do have it as a vowel-sounding nephilim, okay, with that e sound. But they also added the vowels over here when it speaks about Enoch was from, well, he couldn't be from his own sons because nephilim are the sons of the fallen angels, but rather he was from a fallen angel. So if you got rid of all those vowel points there, that would actually be pronounced Nephilim, not Nephilim, but Nephilim. And Nephilim are the fallen ones. Those are the actual fallen angels that came down. The Nephilim are the children in which they make, okay? Just to kind of help you understand that there. So let's go back and let's take a serious look at what's written here then. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And it's exactly what it says. The Nephilim, Hayu Ba'aretz, okay, they were in the earth, Bayamim Hachem, okay, they were in the, there in those days. All right? Then it says, Vigam Achare, okay, and also afterwards, okay, uh, the uh, sons Ve'yabo came. You see, okay. So afterwards, uh, Yabo Bene uh, Ha Elohim. Also afterwards, came uh, unto them the sons of God. El Benot Ha Adam to the daughters of Adam. What you're looking at here is the first part of the verse is establishing the presence of the fallen ones. Now you're understanding who those fallen ones were. See, when we first read here what Moses writes, we don't necessarily understand who those fallen ones are. So Moses tells you they were the sons of God. They lost that estate. And they came to the daughters of man, ve'yaladulachem, and they birthed children to them. Now see, that's what's very interesting. If it was, if the, if the sons of God were the sons of Adam, you wouldn't really have the lahem there. Okay, that's this right here. You would not have that there. The birth, uh, they birth children, okay? That's right there. They birth children. The Yaladu, Lachem, they birth children is the daughters of Adam, but to them, to them literally makes it as if it's some other people. It's almost as like uh, the sons of God don't belong in their ranks. Does that make sense? They don't belong. They birth children to them. Okay? Hema hagevorim. Okay? And uh, and the men, uh, excuse me, and excuse me, and the same were of old, the mighty men that were, excuse me, the mighty men that were of old. Gevarim, um, Ashar Meolam. Now that's another interesting point as well because now that it's talking about they were mighty men from eternity. 
Okay, me'olam is from eternity. In other words, their sons are being offspring of beings that were not earthly. It's very, very obvious at that point there where they're from. Anoshe Hashem. Okay? Uh, so, this is very, very interesting in the way it's worded. And, you know, even though I've read this in Hebrew before, it really, Cindy really caused me to dig deeper into this in a way that I had not thought about. Um, and, and I'm glad she requested me to look at this and do a teaching on this because it really has um, strengthened, you might say, who these fallen ones were. Is it basically what it's doing is clearing it up. They were the sons of God and the children were born to them and they were from eternity. Uh, so very fascinating uh, insight there I wanted to share with you. By the way, I'm down here in Orlando. My wife couldn't make it. Her sister uh, flew in uh, to, uh, to us here. Uh, is at the same time that there's this Believe conference going on. Uh, if you were not able to make it, I know we have a few people that have actually come. Uh, I hopefully I can meet. If, you've, if you're actually here uh, as part of this conference, love to meet you there just look for me at the entrance way there it starts at 9 a.m. this morning I'll be there probably about 30 minutes before it gets started love to meet you there just look for me find me it's a lot of people there but you can also if you go to this link I'm gonna put it in the description you could watch it virtually and believe me it is so amazing uh, even what you'll learn here especially if you're doing this as a business is really something you want to do uh, there were eight doctors on the platform last night explaining why they chose to get involved with this but i want to share this was from the video i did yesterday which by the other day the one uh, uh, now you know who the 10 kings are if you go about 20 minutes into that video that's when i really begin to start teaching uh there i wasn't planning to go the direction i went into there but i think you'll be blessed by it i want to play a short clip here when ron talks about uh, what happened, or actually I'm telling about what happened to him uh, over his thyroid. And his, his doctor and himself both believe that the X39 caused, the stem cells caused his thyroid to grow back. Listen into this. And I'll see if I can't get a meeting with you and, uh, I know that's a long shot, right? With you and David, right? I'll tell him that I know the smartest guy that would that could help him learn about his own product. <laughs> well, yeah, don't lie about it. <laughs> By the way, Ron is near. Hey, Dave, have you ever tried those here. life weight patches I talk about? Yeah, in fact, I'm on my second month right now. You know, and, Ron, he just and, had the, his doctor and, is going nuts over it because now he, he thinks that maybe his thyroid has grown back because he had to quit taking thyroid medication. Well, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. You know, I'm paraplegic incomplete from a accident I had four years ago. Um, I'm working, I'm going to the gym four or five days a week. I mean, I can walk with a walker. I can, I'm driving now and all that, but I was bedridden for a year and spent a year in a nursing home, but I'm, I've had some, some uh, my thyroid's good, but I've had had some issues with my prostate and and getting up, you know, four or five times a night. And I think it's starting to help with that to reduce yeah. uh, swelling of my prostate. And I've noticed I don't have as much nerve pain in my right side as I did. So it's I don't have any miracle, you know, four or five day uh, thing that happened. But but I'm just going to keep keep with it and see what it does. I think you're kind of like myself, Dave. Uh, Ron was pretty much, I think, the same too. It took time for him. Uh, I had the prostate issue as well, and it was about seven months after using it that I finally didn't have to get up and go to the bathroom at night anymore at all. Uh, and like you, I was five times a night easy. And uh, and then the other thing too that I'll tell you that uh, that I experienced was. Uh, 
Uh, and this is, you might want to try it. Ron's the one that told me about this, and that's where I took the Eon patches I'll, and I placed it behind. Now. But uh, Ron, the guy in the upper left hand part of your screen there, uh, his doctor had him stop his thyroid medication. He had it removed because of, uh, I think it's what do you call it, lymphoma cancer or something like that. Maybe I got that name wrong, but it was removed. So he's been on thyroid medication for quite a few years, but now he had to totally stop. And the doctor thinks that his thyroid grew back. Can you imagine that? Uh, that's the man that had stage four kidney failure that recovered, uh, congestive heart failure recovered, so some amazing things have been done from these patches. So that's why I always tell people, I'm not here to sell you something. I just believe in it that strongly. And I hear amazing stories one after another after another. I hope you'll be one of those amazing stories. I'll put the link in the description below if you decide you want to try it out, lifewave.com forward slash Benoom. Uh, and this is at info.com. Uh, you can also learn more about it from there. God bless y'all. Thank you very much.